Hi everyone and welcome to episode 7 of our Config Mess 2023. My name is Johan and in this demo I will continue our journey on making our Config Mango OSD for production just a little bit better. This is the direct follow-up for the session from yesterday where we made some changes to a production task sequence. And this obviously means demo time. Here is the task sequence I showed you yesterday. Today you will learn how to continue to improve it. You will learn about adding in branding, both to the sequence progress as the boot image itself. Also adding in some additional information on the background during deployment through background info. Adding in high performance modes, as well as tattooing in information about the deployment when the sequence completes. So, what I have here is my boot image that I'm using. If I go to properties on that one, this is where you can see I've added in our company background. So this is the Via Monster background image or logo on a background image. Looks like this. It may sound silly, but it's very important to provide that background image for a company when you do deployment for them. The same goes for your progress bar. So if you go to administration and client settings, head over to default client settings. If you go to the computer agent, this text here is what shows up inside of that progress bar. Now, here I have a sequence where I made some changes. I'm going to implement the same changes in the one we worked on yesterday. So first of all, even though the sequence itself is configured for a high performance mode, I have seen that sometimes simply doesn't stick. So I've taken a habit of always adding in this one because it really doesn't hurt to set it twice. So this is just forcing high performance plan. Then here I have a PowerShell script that looks for an external time server and makes a record of, a, of the time of the computer at this point and it sets that as a variable, the OSD NTP start time. If you look at this script, this was originally a script from Microsoft Gallery or Technet Gallery. Obviously, this one is no longer available. So if I try to go to that link, it's long gone. But you can use the Wayback Machine or the Internet Archive to find pretty much anything that used to be in Technet Gallery. So if I go back here to 2020, to March, Sure enough, I'll be able to download that script. Up on our own GitHub repository, I've uploaded a copy of the one that I'm using here in this demo. I've added some files recently to it, so I'll go ahead and update this one. But this is the one I'm using right here. Then I'm going to put a script or copy over a script that starts background info. And this script simply looks for either a computer name, or with the computer name variable, or the uh, SMSTS machine name variable, and it sets that on the background itself. Now, this script obviously requires you to have added background info to your boot image. So what I did here is put together the PowerShell script that simply mounts the boot image and copies those files to it. So I'll be happy to share this script as well. Copy, paste, a healthy sync here. And it should now also be available in this folder. So, I have already done that on my boot image, so I don't need to do that again. But if I go back to my sequence, I'm going to add some more stuff to it. So, for example, in the end of a successful deployment, I'm not really interested in reporting time on deployments that failed, but obviously you could do that if you want to. But I'm going to copy this one over to my happiness section. 
I'm going to calculate or add a little script that simply calculates the time before the first variable and the last variable, and then I get the duration in between. And as you can see here, I'm just getting a time span from the start time to the finish time, and I do it in total minutes. And I'm setting that result as a variable. So let me grab that script, back to the GitHub repo again. Calculate report time. And you have that as well. All right, so I'm going to head and copy that one and paste it here. And finally, I'm going to add in the script that does the tattoo result or tattooing of some information that I want to have. So I'm pasting that one in as well. If I look at this script, this is a script that I borrowed from Jürgen Nilsson. It's a very, very basic script that just sets a few registry keys. And these are the keys that are being set. And this means that you can either use see and pivot or other scripts to retrieve this information later or you can extend hardware inventory to create a wmi class of this information or even better you can go a little bit more advanced and if you want you can borrow a script from jason sandys that he in turn borrowed from stefan back in the days but this script not only has the capability of writing the register keys directly but also the WMI classes directly. So you don't have to do a, a reg to moff or anything like that. You can just inventory that class directly. So quite elegant. I will share a link to this script below as well. But other than that, now I have a sequence that I have added in a little bit of additional information to. Double checking that I didn't forget anything. Don't think so. One, two, three, four, five. No, it looks pretty okay. Well, maybe one thing. There is a default BitLocker step that I've added into my sequence, this one here. If you're testing on virtual machine and you don't enable TPM on virtual machines, the sequence is gonna fail for you. So if you wanna do that kind of testing, I recommend selecting this checkbox here. Or simply go ahead and add a virtual TPM ship to your virtual machines. That's a requirement for doing Windows 11 upgrades anyway, but for now, I'm putting this one in here. And I'll click OK. So let's put this one to the test. It's already deployed. I created that deployment yesterday. I'm going to go to a virtual machine. Go to a clean snapshot. Gonna mount it on the boot image from yesterday, or the same that I used yesterday. And I'm gonna boot it up. You can see my background image. I click next. Select the prod two sequence. Type in a computer name, test number three. Along the sequence, get the time from the time server, set that as a variable. Starting background info, adding in the computer name and some network info on the background itself. And now it's going to run through that entire sequence, calculate the result, and store that in the local registry of the machine. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining, and I wish you a happy 2024. Hope to see you again next year. Bye for now.